Hey, what's up you guys? Anthony here from the Ultralight Backpacker. Today I'm standing in front of you in the Carnival Panorama Atrium here. Last day of our seven day Mexico Riviera cruise. This is my seventh cruise and we're gonna be walking you through this ship front to back each floor, not like all the other videos where they're skipping all around. We're gonna go front to back every single floor and we're gonna show you this ship top to bottom. But you're gonna to wanna to stick around for the entire video. I'm gonna leave and drop some really important hints that are specific to this ship that are gonna really make your life on board so much more enjoyable. This isn't gonna include information about lines, what to ride first, what to do first, what to eat first before the lines get horrible. Starting from the back of floor one, you can see all the way forward of the ship. It's gonna be rooms the entire way down, so we're not gonna walk the whole thing. At three locations on every floor, you will see maps like this along with elevators. Here we are on the aft deck, and then you'll have one up forward, and then you'll have one center of the ship. Each floor will designate elevators like this. I wanna to go to deck two. two. Car B. It will tell me to go to car B. And from in here, I will not push anything at all. And I will go to my respective floor. On deck two here, the only thing of substance is the Harbor Family Harbor Lounge. Let's go check it out. Color scheme is a little different down here, but we can see the Family Harbor Lounge. It is key card accessible for kids to enjoy. And that heads all the way down to the front of the boat and there's nothing else down there but rooms. First tip of the trip is to always decorate the door of your room makes for quick and easy finding for when you're up on your deck and you're running towards your room and you forget the room number. Okay, deck three aft, we have the Vista restaurant, which we're gonna go into now, no through access, and then you've got the Horizon restaurant up forward, and then uh, part of the Panorama atrium with some bunks forward. Let's start at the back. There is the beautiful Vista restaurant. This is where we ate. You would come here uh, every evening if you had any time dining, two stories. And then if you had, uh, you know, the assigned dining, you would be at the Horizon restaurant. So this was very beautiful. Okay, here we are, deck three in the Panorama Atrium. As we said, there's no through access to get to the Horizon restaurant. So we had to take another floor, but I will show you this restaurant as well. So here is the Horizon restaurant. As you can see, it appears to be one floor to me. There is through access to the Ford staterooms, which are up there. And those are just the same as floor one and two. So we do not need to explore those. As we head back towards the after deck of the ship to go up to deck four to show you from back to front, a quick tip about getting a seat at the restaurant is using your cell phone. There's an app on your phone. You request a table and my suggestion to you is to do that early in the beginning. So if you request those tables between 515 and 545, you're guaranteed a seat in less than 10 minutes. So there's gonna be no waiting time for you. Same goes for formal night, get in early, and that will give you plenty of time to go watch the shows, the good shows that will start around 7 p.m. I got another trick for you with those too. Okay, here we are, deck four aft. We're gonna be going forward. But first, I'll show you the fourth floor of the Vista restaurant. We are just up here a few moments ago. This is the Anytime Dining Restaurant, just from the upper view, that being the back of the ship. From there, you have the back entrance to the Limelight Lounge, your comedy studio. We're on the fourth deck, the gangway, where you'll enter the ship. So you can see Limelight Lounge here. This is where a lot of the comedy shows take place. This place will be a packed house. You must show up early for comedy shows or else you will be standing room only, without a doubt. Get here early, Limelight in the Lounge. You will have some amazing comedy and I hope you are not easily offended because these comics are ruthless. Everything from sex, religion, politics, Trump, you name it, they're gonna rag on it and it's hilarious. Walking further forward, we come to one of the cooler places here. The Heroes Tribute Bar. This is going to be an excellent place for you sports fanatics. You can watch the football games, baseball games, etc. Heading further forward, we come into the fantastic casino that the Carnival Panorama has. This thing is massive. Plenty of craps tables, roulette, three card poker, straight up hold them, etc. Awesome stuff here. Okay guys, continuing forward, we're on the fourth deck of the atrium here. Great place to listen to some tunes. We have some shopping up here as well. And heading forward, you'll be spending a lot of time here on your evenings. 
heading into the liquid lounge. Here we are in the liquid lounge. Two stories, beautiful. All right guys, here we are on stage of the liquid lounge. Something of importance here that you're gonna wanna know. It is two stories, so you have two options here. You must get to these shows a half hour early and wait in line if you wanna get a seat that you desire. These seats will fill up in three minutes. So if the show starts at 7.30, the doors will open at seven and every seat will be full by 7.03, guaranteed. All right, we're on deck five aft. We're gonna head into the Havana Bar and Pool and then head forward towards the front and show you everything in between. The Havana Bar and Pool site is an awesome place to hang out. The pool itself is reserved for the Havana guests only. I have confirmed that as there's a special wristband you wear. As you can see, wristbands are required. We're gonna head out just to show you what it looks like. As you can see, the Havana pool and bar is a great place to come hang out. Easily the best views on the ship. Great jacuzzis. You can only use these if you're a Havana guest. This pool is absolutely beautiful and phenomenal. I wish I would have booked a room down here because these jacuzzis are amazing. They're big, they're hot. Coming out from the Havana Lounge, we're going out to the promenade deck here. Deck five, you'll spend a lot of time here. You've got great bars. You can you can head outside on both sides to go walk around the ship. It'll be a giant U-shape. You cannot go all the way through the back as the Havana bar is there. We got this great lounge here that you'll be hanging out at quite frequently. As we walk forward, you get to the Java Blue Cafe. You can buy specialty coffees, donuts here, etc. This is the line you can wait in if you're old school, don't like using a cell phone, and you want to reserve a table before you go to a restaurant. You do that here at this kiosk. Even further forward here, we get to the Pig and Anchor restaurant here. This is a great place to come and enjoy some uh, smoked barbecue meats. There is an area outside that we're going to head into and show you. This is another great place to come and watch your football games, baseball games, etc. Outside on the promenade deck, you can see there is seating available. It's all the way around. And then we have our pig and anchor area here. This is going to be free. Yes, I said free. This is going to be free for uh, two to three hours a day. I believe from 12 noon to about three o'clock. This is free, this area. Uh, you'll get some awesome buffet style um, smoked meats. But again, you want to get here early. Uh, get in line five, 10 minutes early because the line will shoot up towards the front of the ship. So the key with this cruise, because there's so many people on board, is you need to get to things early. So we always played it safe, me and my wife, got to things 10, 15 minutes early um, for food, half hour early to shows and we were golden. Always got the seats we wanna, always did what we wanted, but uh, you will have a bad experience, I think, if you show up late to everything. You won't find seats to anything. Let's keep heading forward. Forward of Pick and Anchor is the Pixel Gallery. It's a great place to come look at your photos. There's no longer a, a print copy. They'll show up on the screen here when you walk by. It does like a facial recognition software, which is pretty awesome. Secret bathrooms are gonna be right here. Further forward, a fan favorite of those who like to drink is the Alchemy Bar. This place was already always smoking packed. Over here, you've got the Sushi Bar. So you have to pay to eat here. There's no free times for that, but uh, great food nonetheless. In this little mini atria, we've got the Fahrenheit 55 Steakhouse. I did not eat there, but I heard great things about it. Over here, you had the piano bar, which was fantastic. This was a great little area for me to come read. Lots of solitude here during the day. Over here, you had uh, food cooked on, you know, the hot fire grills. I forgot what this whole setup was called. You had to pay for this service. But uh, I saw families coming in here having a fantastic time. As we head further forward, one of my favorite places to come enjoy was the library. It says it's a library bar. However, there is no bar here. Tons of great books. I was actually shocked to see how many fantastic books there were on this cruise. And it looks like people sort of brought their own and sort of stocked the shelves because there's about triple the amount of books from the first day I was here, which is amazing. And I got on the ship early, so I was one of the first to grab books. A little quick note for you bookworms. These drawers are not locked, although they look it. You just push it open and it clicks into place. This was a fantastic place to come I'd do work on a laptop if you had needs for that. Okay, fifth floor of the atrium. We are way up here, as you can see. We're gonna head forward to the top of the liquid lounge. As you can see here, this is the top of the liquid lounge. On the front and back of the ship, the promenade deck opens up to the open deck, and you can walk to the bow of the ship here and get some fantastic views. As you can see, we're on the bow of the ship, on the fifth floor. You can see out forward, there's a jacuzzi for the staff, and that's the bow of the ship. 
We're gonna head back inside to deck six aft. Okay guys, we are now deck six aft. Uh, the only thing of importance up forward, we're gonna have the warehouse video arcade, Club O2, Circle K, stuff for the kids, so let's go check that out. One thing to note to you first time cruises is you really gotta watch what you spend on board. People don't realize that there's a gratuity added for every day you're on the ship, which on this ship weighted out to $97 per person in my cabin. Yeah, as we reach forward of this deck six, we'll turn into the elevator stairwell. You can see we're at our video arcade. This does cost money, so do not let your kids run wild here. You can set a cap on them or limit them. All right, let's go check out Club O2. Still for the Ford. And you'll find Club O2. And there is an outside area for one of these cruisers too. I'm not sure exactly which one. Okay guys, now on deck seven. I did not walk all the way off because it's just cabins. The only thing of note here is gonna be the sky zone. Again, kids and adults can do this. It's currently locked up right now, but it's gonna be in this little elevator wall here. There's gonna be spots for your shoes, etc. The jump house is back in there. It does cost money, so that is additional, but it's a good time. Too dark outside to show you, but also on decks. Five, six, seven, nine, 10, and 11 and 15 are areas with balconies so that you can see out towards the front of the ship. Oh, look at that guys, now we're on deck eight. I am not aft once again because it is all cabins. This was the floor that I stayed on and to me, this was the perfect floor. So whether you're on a balcony or an inside room, deck eight was perfect because you were two flights from the Lido deck getting food and two to three flights from the main promenade deck, casino, etc. So you're always in the middle of everything. You didn't hear any noise from the music, no noise from the crowds, no noise from anything. There's complete solitude. Deck eight is an amazing deck to stay on. One thing I will show you on deck eight is just a laundry room, which you can find on any floor that has cabins. Remember, if you guys are coming on this cruise and you wanna save some money, you can bring one large bottle of champagne or wine that's continuously sealed so that you haven't broken the seal. That'll save you on some of the alcohol costs. Also, make sure that that is in your carry-on bag and not in your check-in luggage because those will routinely break. Oh, and going into the laundry room here. You can see here, this is the laundry room. And you buy the soap here, so you don't need to bring any little wash station and it took me two wash cycles and three dry cycles to dry my clothes completely and wash them completely so if you're going to do laundry here make sure you separate your clothes don't combine you and your wife's clothes or you and your kids you want to make sure that all that is set up okay guys now we're on deck nine i did not go aft because again it's like deck eight it's just cabins and again there's going to be a balcony up front it's too dark to show you that, but it's gonna be just like a balcony from any other floor. All right guys, here I am, deck 10, Lido deck, full aft. We can see we've got the pool, two jacuzzis here, tides bar, and of note, right up front here is gonna be your go-to place after midnight, the pizzeria. Open 24 seven, baby. I can go get a pizza right now if I wanted to. That food is delicious. Over here, you've got the little crab shack deal. Some sea, yeah, the seafood shack that costs extra. But if you're into that, go ahead and order something up. Going in through the double doors here, one much faster than the other. You're gonna really have to slow down for this one. It's gonna be the Lido deck. So the Lido deck is split into two different dining buffets to decrease the crowds. You've got drink stations on both sides, all that good stuff. And then you can actually access the uh, the cucina up here, the Italian restaurant, and the um, the Asian inspired restaurant. We'll show that on the Deck 11 video. But you can see the buffet here. Beautiful goodies. Nothing's out yet because it's too early. One of my favorite locations here is the omelet bar. Oh my God, where there's some amazing quality things made here. With all kinds of beautiful ingredients. Top notch stuff. So both sides are identical the way that they look. You can see all the way down. Cheers, as far as the eye can see. Another quick tip here, guys. One way to stay from getting sick on these cruises is wash your hands before and after you touch food. I never got sick, but people all around me were getting sick. So you can see here, identical buffet station on both sides. As you head further forward on both sides, you'll find the little ice cream stations, but there's also gelato during the day, which are great. We're gonna head out towards the beach pool now. One of my favorite places to eat in this entire ship was right here right at the uh, Guy's Burger Joint. This place is fantastic. You'll get awesome burgers here. You can customize them, order them, excellent fries. And then we've got the uh, beautiful pool out here. So this is the beach pool. Uh, no jacuzzis here. Those are only gonna be found on the aft the deck and up forward on deck 15 Serenity, which we'll show later. A couple little bars back here, just like all the rest. And then as we head further forward of the ship, you're gonna get up to uh, some staterooms. 
All right guys, deck 11 aft here. We're starting to get into some of the fun ship action up above, which we'll get to. But we're gonna walk inside. We're gonna show you the Asian kitchen and the uh, Cucina, the Italian restaurant. Now you can take the stairs to get up here, the elevator, etc. Or you can take that little secret staircase that I showed you from deck 10. Remember we talked about that earlier? That's it right there. I'm gonna give you a little fun tip here. We got the Asian kitchen here, fantastic food. And you've got the Cucina de Capitan, okay? Italian food here. Now, there's been a couple cruise critics who said that the Asian kitchen is much better than the Italian. And because of that, the lines are insane. So if you are coming on the ship, you need to eat at both of these the first day. You have to, it'll be empty. If you do it any other day, it's gonna be smoking busy the whole time. Okay, whole time. If you do it any other day, you gotta get there 20 minutes early, you'll guarantee yourself a seat. If not, the line will literally stretch out the door. Controversial as this may be, myself, my wife, and many other guests that I talked to said the Italian food to them and myself was way better than the Asian kitchen, which is contrary to what a bunch of these cruise critics and YouTube has said and people on YouTube. So I encourage you to go and eat both and make a decision for yourself. Don't follow the herd. All right guys, out on the aft deck 11 walking forward. This is a nice little area to go. Decreased the amount of people on the back decks here. But the one thing I wanted to show you up here was these fantastic tables for eating outside with a great view. So you have these fantastic tables here on both sides and up there that are just absolutely perfect for dining outside on those nice sunny days in the Mexican Riviera. You can see the pool from down below, and as we head forward on deck 11, the only thing you're gonna find over there is staterooms that head forward all the way to the bow with the balcony. So let's go ahead and head to deck 12 aft. All right guys, we're at deck 12 aft facing back of the ship. Let's walk forward. This is our little running track up here. I really wish they would have put this on the promenade deck, make it a little bigger. But what are you gonna do? We got a little workout area on both sides. We got a fantastic full-size basketball court, and they also have some little soccer nets. You can see the sky ride area where you can ride the bicycles. This was a fantastic thing to do, but I've got a tip for you on this, so you're not waiting a long time. As we walk forward here, we're gonna get to the little fun zone area. We've got mini golf, table pool, some four-way ping pong, and one really awesome place in here is the clubhouse. Here you go, you can see the ping pong tables, all kinds of good stuff. Lots of stuff to do in here. You can do some uh, foot version of pool, it's like a kickball version. And then you can head down from up here into the clubhouse area. So I see a lot of kids hanging out up here. This is a great place to come when you're at port because no one will be in here. Okay guys, before I head forward towards the water slides, I just want to make note, deck 13 right here is isolated. So we're going to head up there real quick. The Sky Park is primarily on the back side of the ship that you can see from deck 11. So when you come up here, you can see it's all empty now, but this is the little bike track here. So you can ride those bikes. You get in line here, you've got lockers there. My favorite thing to do here was right here, the rope walk that goes all the way around the back side of the ship and can hang you upwards of 40 feet in the air. That thing was absolutely incredible. Doing tight ropes on a swaying ship was insane. I did that every single day of the cruise and I had a blast doing it. Okay guys, a quick note on this. You're gonna wanna get here the first day. The second you get on board, try and come and do these as fast as possible. There will not be any lines. That's the best time to do it is port day or the first day or early on in the morning. Make sure you're wearing appropriate clothing and don't bring any extra camera gear or any stuff. You can wear a GoPro on your head or your chest. They will allow that. So it'll make for some great video later on. Okay guys, we're back on deck 11, still heading forward. And you can see the massive three story or maybe even four story water park this place was fantastic so much fun the red slide here had inner tubes the blue slide over there was just with your body and you could haul some serious butt on these things it was a lot of fun a really fun thing is to wait for that bucket to drop on top of you you'll never experience any sort of weight like that in your life man feels like a bus hits you as we head forward you're gonna head into some state rooms here, here and here. And then also, this is gonna be one of the specialized little spa areas that you've seen in many of the other videos, the Cloud9 Spa. So this is currently closed because it's the last day of the trip. However, all your fitness
fitness salon thermal suites and the spas will be in here. You can reference other videos for that that show the inaugural cruise. Another tip, if you hit that gym and you're a gym rat, hit it during the lunch hours or at dinner. The place is freaking swamped in the mornings, man. You can't get on any of the equipment because everyone wants to work out in the morning. So do it in those awkward times. All right, let's head up one more deck. Okay guys, we're now on deck 13. It's a little intermediary deck that's gonna lead us up to the sanctuary area and the water slides up there. But there's also, I believe, some cabins up forward here. They're specially reserved. I'm losing count, man. There's too many decks. All right, guys, we're now on deck 15. There is no deck 15 aft. It's only forward. And this is one of the best places you're gonna be able to come if you have no kids, the Serenity deck. This place is awesome. Adults only. It is free on Carnival. This is something that Princess charges for, which is fantastic if you're a Carnival cruiser. We're gonna head forward here. I'm gonna show you what I love about this place so much. Okay, guys, number one, one of the main reasons I love to come in here was the jacuzzi. Fantastic jacuzzis here, overlooking the beautiful views on the forward deck. It did get pretty windy up here, so bring a jacket. The cabanas were fantastic. You can move them depending on the way the sun was setting. One of the best things back here, little known secret is during the lunch hours, they had a fantastic buffet style salad bar here with all kinds of fresh ingredients, all kinds of lettuce, toppings, dressings, etc. And there were giant bowls, water here in ice baskets with fruit and stuff like that. So it was all flavored and just a fantastic place to get away from the buffet food and have something a little healthier. So you could get salads here every day, I believe 12 to 2.30 or something like that and uh, a great place to get some salads. One of the coolest places to catch a picture though was up top here where the water slides are. So we are currently right here, we're on deck 15. Technically this will bring you, if you go up to the water slide to take a picture, you'll technically be on deck 16 or 17, okay? Now the water slide, like I said, is awesome. If you want a short line, you're gonna do the blue one. The red line here, which was with the inner tube, would usually take uh, riders a little longer to get through the water slide. If you wanna save yourself from freezing to death, I would suggest bringing some sort of a t-shirt or rash guard to wear. That will help keep uh, the wind from really chilling you out when you're at the water park, if it's not super hot out. And it worked wonders for me. I'd have people standing all around me shivering while I was nice and toasty warm in my long sleeve rash guard and swim trunks. So make sure you bring some flip flops, swim trunks, and a rash guard on your trip and you're gonna be a happy camper if you're gonna be using any of the water work entertainment here. All right, heading back down my corridor, guys, you see I can pass by my room easily and realize, oh, that's my room. My wife decorated it, little tapping badge. And we'll show you some little tricks in the room here as well. First things first in the bathroom, bring yourself a little dollar loofah. It's gonna save you later. Another fun fact, a little dollar canteen of soap here will work wonders instead of using the crappy little bar soap that leaves your hands super dry. Another thing I like to bring is some wet wipes for your booty because you're gonna be doing a lot of eating and that means you're doing a lot of pooping. So your tush is gonna be a little sore. Hey guys, here's the standard closet that you're gonna find in all the state rooms. So pretty small, but it actually did hold a lot of stuff. So one of the things that you might notice is there's actually a lot of hangers here, so that's great. But you can buy some foldable hangers on Amazon for about $10. that will fit in your suitcase if you need extra room. Also, there's little foldable hampers that you can buy that are like the size of your fist. And we use those for our dirty laundry that worked fabulously well. I will bring those forever on my next couple trips. Here you can see an interior cabin. Wife's still sleeping. And we also have a mini fridge in here, which stored our two bottles of champagne that you can bring on for free, as long as they're sealed. So one bottle per person. Another good thing to note is we have outlets, both normal prong and USB. There's also some European uh, 230 volt version. Bring some small extension cords. They work really well, like five outlets in it, so you can plug a bunch of stuff in. Another fun fact is if you take this card out, for instance, you're supposed to put a key card in here to keep the air conditioning running and the lights on if you want them on. But since most people keep their cards on them, this feature um, leaves your room hot by the time you get back. So instead of placing your key card in there, which you want to take out of the room, just grab a card from your steward, like Eddie here, fantastic guy. Just place that in there. Or one of your uh, you know old school cards or some business card. 
and that will keep the room freshly cool or hot however you want it while you're gone. And if you leave the lights on, for instance, the lights will be on when you get back. Okay, so also when you get on board, all you're gonna get is this key card. So you do not get a lanyard with your purchase of a cruise. So what I recommend you do is you can go on eBay and buy them early. So I bought this first edition limited run Carnival Choose Fun lanyard that was on the inaugural cruise of the Carnival Panorama ship in 2019, which is awesome. But you can find a bunch of different Carnival ones on eBay for between like $3 and five bucks. Otherwise, when you come on board the ship, they start at around $9.99. They're bulky and they've got this weird little anchor on them and they, they unclip and they're, they don't really look that classy and everyone has them. So it's kind of nice because you stand out. You wear one of these, people ask you questions about it and it's kind of fun. It, it leads to some interaction and stuff like that. So it's, um, I would, suggest that you buy something online or, or grab one from a family member or do something different that they don't have on the ship because it uh, makes it kind of fun. All right guys, time has come to leave the room. We're gonna go hang out in the library and read till it's our time to disembark the ship back in Long Beach. We have had a freaking blast on this trip, our fourth cruise to Mexico. <laughs> I'm sure there will be more at some point. Thank you guys for coming along and joining us. If you like the content we're bringing, please like, share, and subscribe. And we will see you next time.